Hi, this is Mike from TheSubStream.com. I've got something on my chest. And no, it is not my two gynecomastic man breasts. Tomorrow marks the release of a movie called Let Me In, which is a remake of the super popular Swedish underground vampire relative hit Let the Right One In, which itself was a remake of a book from a couple of years earlier. I got a screening of the American remake Let Me In at TIFF a couple weeks ago, and there's a more in-depth review of it elsewhere on the site, thesubstream.com. But suffice it to say, for now, for this purposes of what I want to talk about, that it's a really, really good movie. It just, unlike the original, has no real reason to exist. It covers almost all of the exact same thematic ground as the original Swedish film and the book that they're both based on. Some things are different. The story becomes, in the American film, much more the story of the boy. He's now the hero of the story in a way that he wasn't necessarily in the Swedish film, and that's theoretically easier for audiences, American audiences, to deal with. Of course, the big difference, the difference that matters, is that in the American version, they're speaking American, they're not speaking Swedish, and they're not in Sweden, whatever foreign country that is, they're in America, where Americans live, and Americans want to watch American stories told by Americans speaking American, and that theory is kind of borne out by the numbers, because in the 60s, if you look at domestic box office, foreign films contributed 10% yearly of the domestic box office. That number held relatively steady all the way through the 80s until you get till now when it's down to literally three quarters of one percent of the domestic box office is contributed by people going to see foreign films. Why is that? Are Americans and Canadians getting dumber? Are we getting more xenophobic than we used to be? It's not necessarily either, I'd say, but it's down to a bigger issue, which is that as the amount of money that movies can theoretically make grows to be in the billions, filmmakers and film distributors, the people that make and import the films that Americans and Canadians watch, are becoming more and more scared of spending money on making untested intellectual material. Here are some more numbers. In 1990, from the top 10 grossing domestic box office films, nine out of those 10 films were pieces of original IP. Either original scripts, like the one for Home Alone, or adaptations of material that was from another media, like the film version of the cartoon strip Dick Tracy. Every year since 2000, more than 50% of the top 10 grossing films per year were remakes, sequels, reimaginings, or adaptations of other pre-existing films. In 2007, three of the top 10 grossing domestic box office films were pieces of original IP. And if you get more strict about the definition of what original IP is, and say that you, it can't be an adaptation of something that was a cartoon or a superhero from a comic strip, in 2007, zero of the top 10 grossing domestic box office films were pieces of truly original IP. So we're either all getting dumber collectively somehow, we're being exposed to radiation poisoning that nobody has been able to understand, or the people that are making decisions about what movies to make and what movies to distribute are making decisions based on risk factors that are making it look like we're getting dumber. They remake films like the Swedish film Let the Right One In because they assume that no one's going to see this small Swedish foreign film because it's foreign and not in English. And if they remake it for an American audience, they're remaking a bit of IP, of intellectual property, that's already been tested. They're not making some random script that some guy wrote out of his brain in a fit of creativity and then pushed across the table at Spago. It's a much safer bet in theory that's borne out by the numbers. But for people that like original stories, this is really, really bad news. There will be less foreign films and less original IP films around for us to watch. But also, and this is the real, actual, great tragedy of the remake, of the Let Me In, of the remake, adaptation, sequel, prequel trend that's happened in the past 20 years, is that really talented filmmakers are spending their time making films like Let Me In, films that are very beautiful, very well-made, well-acted, exquisite to look at, full of dread and atmosphere, but that are completely redundant because they're just copies or remakes or different American versions of films that already exist, that you can go watch, that you can go find, that are really, really good. Go watch all of the Girl with a Dragon Tattoo films before the remake of that shows up next year. 
Go watch foreign films. They're great. Just because they speak a different language doesn't mean that they're scary. You might have to read, but it's okay. You, I know you know how.